You know, I really don't know how the fuck people do it. How, how you guys manage to fucking live, I mean. I guess it'd obviously be easier if there's more than one person, like, working together. Husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriend, if they actually can get along with each other and they're working together towards some goal, you know, shared goal or something. But, like, how the fuck do people do it, especially single people? Everything is such a fucking pain in the ass. Like, everything. Everything. Things that used to be so much easier now are just a massive fucking pain in the ass. I mean... I hate it. <clears throat> and everything's so damn expensive now. Like, everything is ridiculously expensive compared to what it used to be. Not even that long ago. 10, 15, 20 years ago. You know? I mean, like, 15, 20 years ago, a stamp would be like a nickel or something, right? Now it's, what, a buck or two or something? <laughs> You know, 20 years ago, uh, probably buy a house for, you know, mobile home or something at least. Or, or some old, you know, fixer-upper house for ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. Now the same place would cost a fucking, you know, at least a quarter million or a half a million or more in a lot of places. Mobile home that you could get for three grand back then. Like in the 90s or early 2000s, nowadays you'd fucking be paying like 50000 or hundred hundred and $150,000 or something for the same shit. And then expected to pay like twice as much on a monthly uh, fee, lot fee and stuff too on top of that. And ten times as much for your electric bill and just on and on and on. Everything's ridiculous, man. Fucking ridiculous. I'm about to go, like, pay my bills off, but now it's more of a pain in the ass. They were having me pay with Zell for my, uh, rent and everything. I learned how to do that, set that up with the bank, and started, you know, doing that for the last few months. And now they say, oh, we're having problems with our Zell. Like, well, they can't fix that, and they're, now they're saying, oh, you go, uh, bring a, you know, uh, cashier's check or something to the to a bank in another town to deposit to pay the rent now or you can use cash app and you got to sign up for that shit and it's a bunch of more of a pain in the ass but you know and then they talk about like they act like they're adding security to things like all the, all the pretty much almost everything that they do that they claim is supposed to improve the sec your security nowadays makes everything like a hundred times less secure you know you remember when people couldn't just walk up with a little fucking RFID scanner in their pocket and fucking copy your goddamn debit card? You know, because it didn't have a fucking chip in it. Duh! Right? <laughs> now you gotta stick the fucking chip in the machine. If the machine's fucked up and can't read, you gotta stick it in three times in a row before you can just swipe the fucking card. Is that more of a fucking pain in the ass? If you don't want to be stuck in one place forever, like, that's that's a massive pain in the ass. Where you're supposed to get your mail, you got to go through all kinds of shit just to be able to get your mail somewhere. Pay out the ass for a post office box, or you got to do address changes everywhere and contact 50 people or something, you know, to get tell them you have a different address now or whatever. <laughs> Fucking pain in the ass. They want to keep you trapped in some place. And they keep jacking the bills up so high in, the, in you know, whatever place you're at to where it's, uh, you know, you can't afford to live there. People used to pay $50 a month, $100 a month around a fucking two, three bedroom house around here. Now I'm paying fucking, almost, you know, $900 a month or some shit, counting the electric bill. Which is about one of the cheapest places in the fucking world now, apparently. To rent some little, you know, ancient studio apartment here. It doesn't even have an oven, you know. 
Got fucking mold coming through the walls. Fucking ants all over the fucking place. I don't know, it's just... Bunch of homeless people fucking sleeping across the street, you know? People rooting through trash cans out behind my apartment when I'm trying to fucking sleep in the middle of the night. Yeah, right? <laughs> It's fucking crazy, man. Oh, it's so much more convenient now. Convenient for what? What the fuck is convenient now? Like, oh yeah, you could, you know, unlimited amount of movies and TV shows that you could watch or whatever. You gotta pay out the ass for it, and it's not special anymore, like it was back when you would, you know go and rent movies or something. Like, they've taken all the fun out of it by... And just made it everything cost more money, or too, you know? Like, everything that used to be, like, family, community, friendship, building type of shit that people would do is gone now. Been replaced with this crap, these little fucking boxes we have to carry around with black fucking mirrors in our goddamn pocket these fucking phones that we can't get rid of because literally everything we have to do is connected to some fucking app and some account that we have to make with passwords and that fucking have all this information about us and all this bullshit gotta remember fucking thousand different passwords or two thousand different usernames and passwords or some for some you know this bullshit and that bullshit you can't even get a fucking uh you know, something on sale at the fucking grocery store. Don't oh, download our fucking app. You know, everywhere you go, download our app, download our app. Download our app, download our app. Sign up for our fucking bullshit, you know. Just every fucking thing. It's such a fucking pain in the ass. It didn't used to be complicated like this, man. I mean, like, for instance, you know. Like, back in the day, if a restaurant was running some promotion, you know, get a free, you know, hamburger with the purchase of another, or, or whatever, or get a free uh, milkshake for your birthday or whatever, right? You just go in there and be like, yeah, here, it's my birthday, see? And they go, oh, cool, here's your milkshake, right? Nowadays, <laughs> it's like, oh, you're going to download our app and sign up for it and spend like a fucking hour and a half dealing with that shit. Our shit doesn't even work half the time. And you just ended up so frustrated, you're like, well, fuck it. I don't need the goddamn, you know, free piece of pie that bad. I ain't gonna fucking stand around here for an hour and a half fucking with this bullshit app just to try to get a piece of pie. You can keep your fucking pie. Shove it, you know? <laughs> oh, a, I hate this shit, dude. Go try to buy groceries at Safeway or something. It'll say something's on sale. Then you get up there and you're like, yes, I have my, you know, old phone number from like 20 years ago. Punch that in. Oh, that doesn't work. You got to download our app. I'm like, what the fuck? And then sign up with the username and password for the app. App number fucking 900 billion, you know, that needs to be updated every two days. You need to download an X, you know, waste another fucking, you know, gig of data on your phone every single, you know, day or two or something so you can update our fucking stupid app that you're almost never going to use. Or fucking spend two hours trying to sign up for the bullshit account and everything just to be able to get a discount that you would have got just by walking in the fucking store with a coupon or something in the past, you know? It's just... Gotta fucking pay the electric bill. I know that'll be fucking fun. I'll get to uh, try and dick around with their fucking shit online for a while and end up trying to call them and they'll have some automated fucking robot computer system fucking me around that doesn't understand anything until finally I'm able to get a hold of a person on the line, uh, which I'll probably have to go through multiple ones because most of the time they don't fucking speak English. And, you know... <laughs> And then maybe after an hour and a half of fucking with that, I'll be able to actually pay my electric bill, which is something you could have just done in the past, like really fast and easy. You know, just make a quick phone call. Bam, fucking bill paid, you know. 
or mail a check or whatever the fuck you had to do. And then it's like, uh, yeah, you gotta move. There's, you know, this first, you gotta, uh, Put in your 30-day notice or whatever, right? I don't know how the fuck do people do that, you know? How do you do that? Like, say you want to move from an apartment in one town. You want to move to some town that's 300 miles away. How do you fucking find and locate this other place you want to move to? Go through all the bullshit and, 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 and red tape that you got to get through to get approved and fucking get into there. And know this as a fact that you're going to have another place to go to within 30 days. And then how are you supposed to make money when you're trying to move all your shit? You can't make, you got to have time off from working because now you got to move all your shit. <laughs> you know, then if you have some like normal local type of job, then you just fucking have to fuck off and, you know, leave it or because you're moving hundreds of miles away and you move somewhere you don't have a job anymore because... You're just trapped. They keep you fucking trapped in this system that just robs you fucking blind endlessly and fucks you over and makes everything so goddamn much more difficult than it ever fucking was in the past and it ever should be. And it's just fucking ridiculous and I'm sick and tired of all this bullshit. I hate it. I fucking hate it, dude. People talking about the fucking, uh, you know, the eclipse coming up. And, oh, it's going to be three days of darkness, the end of the world, and all this shit. I'm like, yeah, about fucking time. Let's can... <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'd be more stoked on living if I won the lottery so I could not have to deal with all, as much of the, you know, bullshit myself. But just so fucking stupid, though, man. Gotta pay and pay and pay and pay. And even if you try to set up auto pay, this shit doesn't fucking work most of the time. You get it working, and then like a month or two later, all of a sudden, no, there's a problem now. We need you to come down here and fill out 900 pages of fucking paper forms now. Like, what the fuck, dude? Mmm. You know, sign up for some shit to pay stuff online or whatever, and by the time. You know, a month or two goes by. You don't fucking remember the goddamn username and password because it's username and password number 9,795 or whatever. Or <laughs> give or take, right? Because you got to have username and password and account for fucking every goddamn thing. Everything now. And half the shit doesn't even fucking work right. Like, you get these fucking forms that try to autofill shit for you, and you're trying to put your address in, and you can't even put your fucking address in because the autofill form just takes up the whole goddamn screen with a bunch of wrong addresses. And you're like, fuck off, get off my screen, get the fuck out of the way. No, it won't, it won't get the fuck out of the way. It's gonna be in the fucking way, it's gonna stay in your fucking way, and it's not gonna let you put your goddamn address in. Whoa, no, that would just be too fucking simple, wouldn't it? God damn it. I'm trying to figure out this cash app shit. Fucking pain in the ass. Keep trying to type my fucking address in. Uh, I don't know. It must, must be nice to have fucking real money and have a, like a, kind of a stable position, you know? To be, like, to live in a fucking, in a house. Some land. Own it outright. And, and... You know, I know they're fucking, you know, bleed you dry there, too, or whatever. At least you can fucking deal with it, you know? Now you got more money, it's a lot easier to be like, yeah, I'll sign up for all this auto-pay shit, you know? <laughs> you just don't have to deal with it anymore. Once you get everything set up on auto-pay, but, like... Must be nice to live somewhere where you're happy to live there. You're not utterly fucking miserable in that place. 
it, it just, I fucking hate this place. But I'm, I'm looking around, looking around, searching around, and, and it looks like damn near everywhere. It looks to me like I would have to go, like, thousands of miles across the country to get to somewhere that is maybe somewhat better than it is here. The whole fucking, you know, Midwest, West Coast, whatever the country is like, fuck no. A lot of the middle of the country that used to be great is fucked now too, because it's every, everywhere you, almost everywhere has been like totally gentrified. So you can't afford to live anywhere unless you're a goddamn millionaire, basically. I mean, we're, we're almost literally living in times where, like, you could go to your doctor's office and, like, the receptionist is living in her car in a fucking parking lot or living in a tent out behind a building or something, you know? <laughs> it's like, that's where we're at, basically. You go to a fucking doctor's office and, like, the nurse... The nurse is, is like, living in their car. <laughs> yes, doctor, where? Yes, doc. Oh, doctor, do you do house calls? Well, yes. Do you have a couch I could crash on? What's that, doctor? Oh, yes, I live in a tent in the forest. It's the only thing I can afford. Right? I mean, <laughs> that's basically where the fuck we're at. Anyone that didn't get their shit, like, situated and buy a house and pay it off and doesn't own something that's, like, grandfathered in in the past is, like, fucked now, basically. They tell us that there's so few homeless, but, I mean, it's horseshit everywhere you go. Any, you know, anywhere. It's this is like this probably everywhere across the country. I mean, can you can you name one fucking store where there's not some people living in their car in the parking lot? Can you find a single patch of bushes that doesn't have tents and tarps that people are sleeping under? Like, oh, oh there's, no, there's no problem. And people want to blame it. No, the fucking... The, the rent is too damn high, man. It's ridiculous. And besides that, people shouldn't have to fucking be renting shit forever, you know? You pay a certain amount of money, like, that shit should be yours. What a fucked up concept it is, you know? Everything's trying to be, be, be this, like, rent thing now, where... You can't afford to live because you're just getting you're you're paying and paying and paying and paying and paying for eternity to never own anything. You live you could you know pay fifteen hundred dollars a month in some apartment, right? What's that like? Uh, Eighteen thousand dollars a year. You live there for ten years. You paid one hundred and eighty thousand. No, a lot more than that, likely, because, you know, they're going to raise your rent every couple of years, right? Probably more like, you know, 250000 or something by the time it's all set and done or more, right? Pay a quarter of a million dollars or more on some fucking shitty little apartment because you've been living there for 10 years or whatever. And guess what? You don't own shit. The second you don't pay your bills, fucking get out. Live, on, live under a bridge. Oh, but you're not allowed to live under the bridge. Oh, you're not allowed to live in a tent. Oh, you're not allowed to sleep in your car, right? <laughs> it's just like... Oh, you want to put money in the... Oh, you want us to send you a debit card? I'm sorry, we can't send a debit card to your P.O. box. We require you to have a home address. Well, gee, I'm sorry I don't have a home address because I don't have a million dollars to be able to afford a home. Sorry. Hmm... <clears throat> Oh, well, fuck you then. Go just fucking die on the street. 
What a lovely fucking world we live in now, isn't it? This fucking pisses me off. I'm so sick of this crap. Oh, it's just adulting. It's adulting. Yeah, fuck, fuck your adulting. And take your adulting and shove it up your ass. It's called getting robbed and... It's called getting raped to death by fucking thieves is what it's called. You want to call it adulting, you know, whatever. And just getting fucking, you know, turned into slaves and robbed blind, you know, until you're... Get, you're getting milked like f we're getting milk for everything we we are for all our energy and all our fucking money like 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 fucking cattle until our fucking udders run dry and then they just put us out to fucking pasture and turn us into fucking beef steak or something basically like that's <laughs> Sucks, man. Bills, 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 bills. Like, how much fucking money do these cocksuckers need? I was listening to this guy talking about how, like, you know, he used to be in construction, so he knows how much, you know, it costs to build things. And he was talking about an apartment that he had, which is, like, better than the one I have. He was talking about how, like, you know, him and one other dude could build a place, you know, like, better than where I'm at for about a $1,000. You know, it would only take him, like, a month or two to build it or, you know, probably if they were fucking around and, you know. But you're paying, you know, paying more than that month after month after month after month after month. This whole fucking building with all the apartments in it that I'm living in right now is like over a hundred years old. And I guarantee you when this building was fucking brand new, this property that sits on the whole fucking building itself in brand new fucking condition costs less than what I'm paying to stay here in this tiny fucking room for a month. You know, somebody bought this shit like 20, 30, 40 years ago. Like, they probably didn't actually pay that much for it either. There's people that, you know, buy up old houses, you know, in the past. When this real estate game fucking really kicked off. When it, they get them for like pennies on the dollar. People are buying fucking... You know, buying houses for $5,000, $10,000, you know. And then now they're like valued at like a half a million dollars or a million dollars or something. It's like, what the fuck? People just using fucking housing as, as like an investment tool, a place to store their fucking, you know, money, basically, and to, to build up equity and stuff like that. They don't give a fuck if people can't afford to live in their shit. There's, you know, empty apartment complexes and empty fucking houses all over the country everywhere because nobody can afford to fucking pay the ridiculous prices to live in this shit. These places are just going to sit there and rot and fall apart. Well... Most of the people in the country are just fucking, or a huge per percentage of the people in the country are just end up, you know, living and dying on the street, living in their fucking car, living in a tent somewhere in a bush. And then most of the population, the population that that isn't in that fucked position because they've got family or because they're fucking rich or whatever the fuck, they don't give a shit. They'd like to see you put in a goddamn concentration camp or fucking gas to death or something. Like, that's that's the type of fucking, you know, people we have in our lovely communities. Goddamn monsters, basically. Heartless, soulless, fucking 
greedy fucking evil bastards everywhere. Like... <laughs> Uh, fucking aggravating, man. It's fucking trapped in the matrix, basically. Like a lot of people are, man. I mean... I mean, really, like... The people I've met, the people I've talked to, like, over the last few years, especially, trying to find, you know, somewhere to, to be able to afford to buy when I did have more money, and it's, it's a real pain in the ass. I had $50,000. I couldn't find a place to buy. I could put a fucking apartment to rent to me because I hadn't built a credit score and rental history and all that shit yet, you know? <clears throat> it's just a nightmare. With so much fucking red tape and bullshit that you have to deal with for anything, for everything. Everything's so goddamn ridiculously overpriced. That you just have to, like, be a slave pretty much all day, every day of your goddamn life. Just to have some little place to sleep. Try to make your own place to sleep somewhere, chase you away, steal your shit, bulldoze your shit, you know, whatever. It's a goddamn nightmare. Went into the free my ass. People living under fucking... You know, the tyranny of warlords in Africa have more fucking freedom than we do. At least they can, you know, live in a fucking hut without having somebody come along and tear their hut down or whatever. <laughs> Fucking aggravating. It's stressful trying to deal with everything alone, not have anybody there like that's supportive and on your fucking side. And not only that, but there's also the other problem, which is like you do try to find people that are supportive to be on your side, and there's some people that want to step up and act like they're going to be that sort of person for you, and they turn out to be like just some weird manipulative, like fucking you know, monster just fucking with your head or something, you know? Like, you know, the, the perp type of thing, right? People, targeted individuals talk about perps, you know? Shit like that is what you deal with, right? Hmm. I don't know, it's fucking crazy. Used to... <laughs> I don't know, it's freaking stressful. I wish the hell that I would have started earlier. Just accepted that things were... I mean, I knew things were fucked the whole time before, and I, like, avoided it as long as I could, kind of. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have put things off because I could be in a, you know, better position by now. 
go ahead and push it off. I already be living, you know, already own a house or something. Maybe I could have actually found had a wife and kids and all that. And just partied and slacked off throughout my youth, twenties and thirties and everything. <laughs> I was always very resistant to this fucking world because it. I mean, it pissed me off. I mean. I have hated, like, you know what I miss? I miss the way the world was, like, before cell phones. Before cell phones, back when there were, like, pay phones everywhere. And you could, when, and when you could walk into a store and be like, hey, can I use your phone for a minute? And they'd say, yeah, sure. You know, most of the time. Everything's fucking weird now and more complicated, more of a pain in the ass, no matter what you do. No matter what you're trying to do compared to what it used to be like, you know. i give you an example. I was at the, at the, um, I went to the laundromat to go do my laundry. And of course that, you know, costs like 10, 12 bucks or something to do a load of laundry, basically, and to dry it. Yeah. Of course you gotta have a shitload of quarters. For that, because you gotta pump quarters in to add up to that. <laughs> and the fucking machines take forever, and but I mean, like, just little things, as a for instance, that are a pain in the ass nowadays that would not have been an issue in the past. I had to pee, and. I realized that I didn't bring enough cash with me to get quarters, and I didn't want to use the ATM because the ATM was going to, you know, try and rip me off like three or four bucks or something just to get some money out. I didn't want to blow an extra few dollars just to get my own money, you know. I go over to the, uh, I go to try and use the restroom, and of course that's locked because they got to lock everything now because I, I guess there's like dr druggies going in the bathroom to fucking OD or something. I don't know. But looking at the way the world is today, like, you can't hardly fucking, I can't hardly blame them, you know? <laughs> like, I want to check out of this shit. Go lock the bathrooms Ever you go to a gas station, the bathrooms are locked, go to fucking, you know, fast food restaurant, you gotta have a password or something. And if you're not ordering food there or, like, doing DoorDash and delivering food for them, they aren't gonna give you the password. You're like, you're fucking you have to buy something, right? You wonder why people are shitting on the fucking streets in big cities. That's why. Because where the fuck else are they supposed to shit? Where are they supposed to pee? You know, where are they supposed to go to the bathroom? You know? <laughs> Everywhere they go, like, they gotta... Especially if they don't have a car or what, they're supposed to... Like, walk five miles and check fucking 50 different places until somebody says, Oh, yeah, you can use the bathroom. <laughs> so, of course, they end up crapping on the fucking sidewalk. You wonder why there's garbage in the fucking parks and all over the place. I'm gonna blame them for that. Or, you know, why there's cigarette butts all over the ground everywhere. Look back 20, 30, you know, fucking years, even probably 15 years still everywhere you go there were garbage cans with ashtrays on top of them everywhere garbage cans and ashtrays were literally everywhere true story man like you go to a parking lot in a store there would be probably a dozen or more garbage cans even in just like a small parking lot, you know, half a dozen to a dozen of them, all over the place, there'd be 
dumpsters and trash cans everywhere for people to put trash in. If I can go to a park, there'd be big dumpsters lined up against the wall and anyone could fucking throw their trash in. That's why there wasn't trash all over the fucking street everywhere. That's why there weren't cigarette butts all over the ground so much as there are now. Like, because... There were places to fucking throw your trash. You didn't have to go drive five miles or ten miles across town and, oh, I've got to go home so I can throw some trash away now. <laughs> oh, I better drive home so I can find somewhere I can use a bathroom now. Ugh. Oh, i got to drive five miles down the road to fucking... To this one place where the person might let me use the restroom, you know. <laughs> I mean, seriously, there's been time. I mean, when I'm out dashing, it's it's not really a big issue because I'm going all over the place, and a lot of the, you know, some of the restaurants that you have they have you pick up from, they've got restrooms that you can use. So I just hold it for a while and. But if I'm out shopping or something in town, I live in town, like, if it's between driving halfway across town to use the restroom at a fucking grocery store that's been used by thousands of people, it's filthy as hell because nobody cleans it, or just drive uh, another mile or two to get to my apartment to use my own fucking toilet. I'd rather just do that. <laughs> but. It's just like there's no. The things that like government and cities and things used to do. To, to be supportive of their own people are not done anymore. And the fucking help that is offered is not real. It's just fucking an illusion. Basically it's. I tried to explain this to somebody, and like your average person will just argue with, oh, they just don't want help, they just don't want help, they just want to live on the street, they just, think, you know, like, there's help, they just don't want help, like, you know, it just, people are so fucking brainwashed and like, you just don't get it, like. So cruel and fucking heartless, most people, it seems. Mm hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong, I can. I understand that. I mean, I don't think. I mean, I don't, I don't go by every homeless person with a sign and fucking hand money to him. Because I'm not some rich person that could afford to do that. And there's so many damn homeless people, you know. Oh, I gave that guy ten bucks. What about the other, you know, ten thousand fucking homeless people in the same parking lot that are living in their cars there, right? <laughs> what about the, the other ones that you passed at the front of the store? They're everywhere now, you know. And some of them are really and really need the help, and other ones are just trying to get money to buy drugs or something. You know, you don't know. There are con artists and shit. I know. It just seems screwed up to me that we live in a world where there are so many people that are like almost like people that will get aggressive and violent in supporting, you know, animal rights and things like that, right? They care so much and will raise huge amounts of money and raise a huge stink and, you know, I mean, you can raise you know, a million people together in Times Square or more to, to, to support some kind of shit to, you know, 
save the whales or protect the fucking western ground squirrel or whatever the fuck, right? But nobody gives a shit about the human beings that are having to live, you know, with, with less rights and less dignity than the fucking animals. I mean, you look at, like, uh, I forget what country did this, but there's a country that actually started, like, housing. They just started providing housing, like, apartments and stuff for all the homeless people and offering them help, and they didn't require them to, like, if they were hooked on drugs or drunk or whatever the fuck, they, they would offer them help, but they didn't force it down their throat and tell them they'd have to go you know, die under a bridge if they didn't take it. And a lot of those people, like, turn their lives around because of it. And, they're, you know, they massively lowered the crime rate, rate, cleaned up the streets and everything, and it costs a hell of a lot less than leaving people out on the street to suffer. But here we live in a country where if you start talking about, you know, wanting to help the homeless... or about homeless people having rights and stuff like that, you'll get hundreds or thousands of people leaving a bunch of angry comments about how you should gas all the homeless to death or throw them in concentration camps or something because that's just the kind of sick fucking evil thinking, you know, of the kind of people that live here is fucked, man. It's like an extremely exaggerated, there's this, there's, there's part of this, you know that movie Dazed and Confused? I was thinking of that, the way that they, they had these hazing rituals, right? And the, the freshmen would get beat with paddles and humiliated in all sorts of ways by the seniors. And then when the freshmen become seniors, they would do that to the next group of freshmen. It's like a cycle of abuse that just gets endlessly perpetuated. Fucking generation to generation. I had to get fucked over, so you should get fucked over too. Yeah, you know, uh, my life has been horrible. Your life should be horrible too. Yeah, you know. Let's make sure life is horrible for everyone forever. <laughs> Let's make it more horrible. You know, so that's, that just seems to be the mentality of people. It really does. It's fucking messed up. You know, like in that Dazed and Confused movie, right? It's like the, you know, those kids in the senior class. They've been looking forward to beating up freshmen for like four years. Now, finally, they're going to get their revenge on those seniors by taking it out on more kids that were just like them. Continuing the cycle of abuse. That's what that's what happens man, in our society, and it's just fucked up. People get off on the suffering of others. It's 
Somehow they feel like they're going to mitigate their own suffering by making others suffer more. It's pretty fucked up. And it's kind of generation, multi-generational, too, I mean, honestly, in a lot of ways. It seemed like at one point in this country, there were parents that wanted better for their children. And then it just kind of turned around in the 60s or something. Where a generation was born that wanted their children to have it worse than them. And they made that fucking shit happen. It's like they were, they rebelled against the system that was, you know still halfway decent that provided them with all this boundless opportunity and you know silver spoon in their mouth basically just by being born in the right time period but they felt pushed around and abused by that so they they created a system that was even worse Now they just tell the younger generation or whatever, oh, just pick yourself up by your bootstraps. I think that's a fucking pretty good, uh, uh pick yourself. I want, how many people even realize, like, the irony of that phrase? Yeah, I mean, seriously, no, it's, it's ironic that that phrase is used so much. Pick yourself up by your bootstraps. Because it's literally impossible to pick yourself up by your bootstraps. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's a perfect way. <laughs> so basically they're saying, yeah, go do some shit that's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> uh. In a world like some kind of fucking sick twisted video game where the rules change all the time and things change all the time you don't even know. So fucking complex. I talk about the rules change all the time. Uh, well, I mean, like, for instance, back in, like, the 70s or something. I don't remember how far back it was. It used to be legal for people to drink and smoke at the age of 18. I think there might have even been a time when it was, like, 16. Right? And nowadays, you gotta be 21 or above, right? And, like, I just... People don't, like the older generation doesn't get it, or if they do get it at all, they don't seem to fucking give a shit. They don't care. They don't, they'll just lecture the hell out of you. The boomers and shit. It's like they don't recognize that things have gotten worse because, well, from their perspective, they didn't get worse because, you know, they went and bought a house when they were young for like $5,000. And they stocked up on everything they needed, and they worked a basic job and made, you know, uh, basically what amount ended up amounting to a fortune with inflation. You know, years later, maybe they, they sold their $5,000 house for a half a million dollars and moved into a better house. <laughs> you know? And now they're sitting pretty with their big pickup truck and their nice fancy house or whatever and the younger generation could never afford to live like them and it's not just the fucking inflation it's a lot of things you know it's it's the I mean there's all kinds of things that come up for younger generation now that were never a problem for like people back in the old days you know for instance uh Like, people that grew up in the 60s and 70s, you know, they were, they were getting their shit together in the 60s and 70s and stuff like that. 80s, hell, even 90s, you know. Like, if they got 
caught drinking a, drinking and driving or something, most of the time the cop would just tell him, hey, pour that out. You go straight home now, son. Don't let me see you out here again. Or if they did get busted, they'd just have to go pay like a $100 fine. <laughs> Maybe watch like a half hour video or something and that was it. Whereas like people later, years later now, have to spend months in some fucking program and pay thousands of dollars and, you know, you could lose your license. People back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know. I mean, there's people, out, there's older, old folks out there driving right now that have, you know, a hundred fucking DUIs on their record and they still have their driver's license. If anyone younger, if they have three DUIs, you're basically lose your license for the rest of your life. Now, that's an example of the difference for generations, you know. Like, there was a lot more freedom in every sort of way, like in the past, you know. If you went to park your car on the side of the road somewhere and sleep or pulled a bus over somewhere to sleep, like, you weren't going to get fucked with it. Nobody gave a shit. If you bought a piece of land and parked a camper on it to live in it, nobody was going to come around and tell you you couldn't live there on your own land. Now they do, you know. If you, uh dug a fucking hole in the ground on a piece of land and, you know, built a little cabin out there and and, and build an outhouse where you're shitting in a hole there, nobody gave a crap. Nowadays, you'd be in all kinds of trouble. You'd have, you know, people coming there to run you off to them you can't live there. That's the kind of shit I'm talking about, I mean. I mean, you can look on, look on fucking YouTube. There's tons of videos of these people trying to do homesteads. Where these people will, like, spend a ton of money on some land and fucking they'll build their own house out there. Or they'll buy a mobile home and then, you know, build a bunch of other stuff out there. And all of a sudden some zoning regulation comes along. You know, they spent a quarter million dollars or more or, you know, $50,000, $100,000 or whatever the fuck that they worked hard to fucking get. And then all of a sudden they're told they can't live on their own fucking land or live in their own house. Or you buy a house that needs a little little repair or something. It's not up to the fucking zoning regulations. Oh, it doesn't pass code or whatever. So they'll say you can't live there. You know? That's the kind of shit you deal with now that you never would have had to deal with in the past. You used to be able to rent a house for 50 bucks a month because there weren't all these rules and regulations from the government fucking sticking their nose into the renter, rental thing, you know? You know, renting was, you know, like a private thing between one person and another, not between a giant corporation and the government and a person, you know. There's too many, you know, a single person trying to, just trying to live now has too many mouths to feed to be able to afford to live. You gotta pay the rental agency and all the employees that work for the rental agency and the corporation that the rental agency is owned by and the, and the you know, heads and CEOs of the corporation that owns the fucking rental agency. And, and then you gotta pay the fucking uh, actual owner of the property that's the landlord and then you gotta pay <laughs> the, you know, taxes and fees for the insurance company and and and, and the all this all, all this other bullshit that you have to deal with basically. It's just all it's all fucking crap, man. It used to be you were paying the landlord, you would give them money and you would stay there. Now you know, you're, you've got like a, you're paying like a hundred different people at, at once or whatever. You're, you're paying a massive amount of money instead of paying the one person that actually owns the property. You have to pay like a hundred people that are involved in managing the property. And it's just way more fucking complex and, and 
Just a bunch of bullshit you gotta deal with now. That's fucking shitty. I really don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do, man. I've been doing DoorDash for like eight months. Pretty steady. I mean, you you could say it would be ten months, but I, I don't. I'm not even gonna count like July and August. I did a little bit in July and August, but only like. I think I made like five hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars or something in July, and probably another you know five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars in August or something, because I was having issues with the phone; it wasn't working right, you know. And uh, I don't really even count those months, so it's been about you know you could say it's been about under ten months, but. It's really been like eight months. Anyways, I mean, it's a pain in the ass. Go out and work 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 and then just watch all your money disappear, basically. Just to pay all the fucking bills. And, and you know, and people don't start out living like this. That's, what, that's why there's all these fucking storage facilities everywhere now, popping up everywhere. They can't, they can't, they can't build enough fucking storage facilities because all these people that are living in a tent on the street or living in their cars now used to fucking live in a house and, and over the course of their life, they came to own a bunch of stuff. They got dishes, they got furniture, they've got you know, <laughs> all their clothes, all the gifts that people have given to them for Christmas for their, you know, and the things that they've gathered up throughout their life, now they need somewhere to put it, and it's not going to fit in their tiny little apartment or in the back of their car, so now they got to pay rent more to rent a space to keep their shit than what you used to have to pay to rent a full-size house, you know, with a big backyard and shit. You used to rent a house with a porch and a backyard and a fucking shed and all that crap, you know? garage for less than what you're paying to rent a space to to store your crap now it's just ridiculous I don't know man I'm not sure what the fuck to do. I don't want to get out of here. I want to move. It's a lot more complicated to move thousands of fucking miles away, though, which might be what I have to do to find someplace better. I don't have that much money. I got a little over a few grand right now. If, uh, if you count the money that I'm about to watch disappear... With all the bills that I'm going to pay here real soon. I'm going to pay a bunch of bills tomorrow and then within the next however many days. Pay and pay and pay, you know. I'm going to pay all the damn bills. And I want to get out of here. I'd like to get out of here right now. I got so much crap in here. My dumb ass thought it was a good idea to... You know, get some help from people with pickup trucks to, you know, oh yeah, bring me a, oh yeah, we're gonna get a bed in here, get a chair in here, we get a dresser, oh look, there's cool, oh, tables, I'll grab that table, I'll grab that table, oh, now I got a table, oh, now I got a big screen TV, you know, I got all this crap here, <laughs> it's a fucking pain in the ass to move, by myself, you know. Where am I going to move to? I mean, it's such a pain in the ass to find a place in the first place. It could take months to even find a place where you can get approved to move in there. And then you got to move all, all the crap. And depending on how much crap you have or how far away you're going, like, that's a big fucking, that's a big job. <laughs> that's a major pain in the ass. 
If you're even if you're only moving like say a couple hundred miles away or something, it's a pain in the ass. I mean, it'd be a bigger pain in the ass, obviously, if you had some kind of regular job where you're working in a store or a restaurant somewhere, because then you got to leave your job, move hundreds of miles away from that, find another one that could take months to find. You know, I don't know how the fuck people do this, juggle all this shit, especially by themselves. I know I don't want to end up fucking homeless. But I feel like an idiot paying so much goddamn money for a fucking... To rent a place to fucking stay. It's just ridiculously overpriced, man. I live in a motel... I live in motels and just hop around if it wasn't so goddamn expensive. Most places are so damn expensive, it's just ridiculous. Most places don't even offer weekly rates anymore, and if they do, they're ridiculously overpriced. <sighs> Plus, it's nice to have a fridge and freezer and a, somewhere to actually be able to cook your food and stuff. So many ways things seem to get easier for people who have a lot more money, I think, you know? You live in a house, a place you got a, you know, barn or a shed and stuff, like you've got plenty of room for all your stuff, you don't have to rent a space for your stuff. Yeah, you gotta pay property taxes and electric bill and so on and so forth, but you don't gotta pay a fucking monthly rent on the shit. I mean, if you got a mortgage, you gotta pay that, right? But in a lot of instances, that's lower than what people are paying to rent a fucking apartment now, you know? People paying a mortgage to end up owning a house, in many instances, are paying less money than people who are renting fucking shitty studio apartments and stuff. One-bedroom apartments and things are paying more fucking money than the people that are buying a house and in some in many instances I guess that'd be the way to go even if you're never gonna pay the fucking shit off as long as you pay like make payments on it for the rest of your life at least you can live in a fucking house instead of some shitty apartment that'll never be yours you know at least you can try to pay it off and own a home. But you gotta own the land that it's sitting on too or else you don't own shit. Of course, I guess even then there's like eminent domain and all that kind of bullshit. And the fucking uh, Bureau of Land Management holds on to your fucking land patent, so you don't really own that either, you know. But it's about as close as you can get to owning anything. Klaus Schwab talked about you will own nothing and be happy. You can see we're already heading that direction. In many ways, we are already there. Because even people that, you know, if you look into it... Um, like, like, I bet you think you own your car, right? And yeah, nobody's likely to come take your car from you, but like, if you really... Why do you why do you think it is that they... they tell, uh, like, all the rules of travel and the need for license and insurance, it's all linked to the fact that the, like, DMV and stuff has your um, certificate of origin for your vehicle. Which is like the real thing that would be like the title of actual ownership. So they own your car. It's like your rent. It's like you're paying rent to them, basically forever for the car you think is yours. And the same thing with land. You know, 
That's why they're able to tax you and have zoning regulations and restrictions on your land because you don't own your land because they have your land patent. They hold a lodial title of the fucking land, so you don't really own shit. You're just paying to stay there until you die, and then they'll come steal it back. You ever wonder why there is, you know? You ever think about the fact, like... I mean, how many how many people are there in this country, right? Or, you know, you can say this is the same all over the world, but, like... Are you telling me that over generations that our family why is there why don't why isn't there generational wealth? I mean if your great 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 grandfather uh you know owned a house and a bunch of land why don't you fucking own a house and a bunch of land? <laughs> why don't you have some big inheritance? You know, generation after generation of people making money and, 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 and building a bunch of property, and it, it just disappears, and nothing ever ends up being passed on to the family. How fucked is that? Unless you're one of these families that knows what the fuck they're doing, that manages to pass down generational wealth. that even cares enough about their children to try and do so. <laughs> cares enough about their bloodline and their lineage to do so. It's weird. way the world is now. The way that most people just accept it and don't see anything wrong with this shit. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. I guess we're going to find something else to do. Find somewhere to live where I actually want to be. If there is anywhere like that left in this place. A place where I could actually be happy. I mean, part of happiness though is having relationships, you know. But that's been kind of destroyed now, too. It just feels like we live in a country now, and in many ways, like, a lot of the world has become like this, to where people... It's like people have become... Have, what did it say in the, in the Bible? People's hearts have, you know, waxed cold... Something like that. I mean, maybe that cremation and care ritual they do at the Bohemian Grove and other groves around the world has been effective, you know. Because it sure seems like real humanity and real love and care that I used to feel around me in the world is so rare to come across nowadays. Making friends or, you know, making like real friends, or I thought at least, or finding, you know, a woman was something in the past to me that was just so easy. It was... It was as natural as breathing. 
and it's like we're on the same wavelength and there's this connection and now it's like I'm on a whole other wavelength and there's almost nobody there with me it's like I'm on an old wavelength same as I was before kind of and now everybody else is has changed almost everybody else has changed When I do run into people, I do run into women and stuff like that, often enough, like here and there, that seem to be on the same wavelength where I'm able to communicate with them. And, and it's a difference between night and day. It's, it's, it's a massive difference, but I always, you know, within a matter of, you know, minutes or something, end up hearing about their husband or their boyfriend or something, so it's like, oh, they're all taken, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like I've, I don't know, it's like I teleported to a fucking hell dimension or something. From, or I don't know, is I don't know. It's like I teleported to a different dimension or something, and there are a bunch of people here in this world that, you know, here and there that are from the same dimension I'm from, and the, the rest of the people here are like weird fucking creepy aliens or something to me, basically. <laughs> but the other people that are more like me, like, like they're already paired up have been for a long time. I'm the last man, you know? The last single man of my dimension here, apparently. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of people don't even seem to notice the difference in the people. Which I can't imagine how that could be possible, because... It's so freaking apparent to me. I mean, I feel like I'm living in, like, uh... Invasion of the body snatchers or something a lot of the time Just the, the way that how strange people are compared to the way they used to be Just the the coldness and the Sort of robotic I mean, I'll give you just a very simple example, right? Very simple example, and this is one of the ways I can tell when I run into somebody that's like a real person. In the past, if you had a T, this is just an ex it's a very simple example. I don't know, like I don't see how it, what it means or anything, but I'm just saying this is something I've noticed, right? Since things changed in the world, one of the simple things to notice is that. In the past, if you had a t-shirt with some design on it, or you had something written on your shirt or whatever, people would come up and, you know, if you were in a grocery, walking through a grocery store, everybody walking past you would look at your shirt, and they'd be, like, trying to read what your shirt says. And if it was, if they liked what it said, or, oh, oh yeah, that's cool, sure, you know. Nowadays, you could wear anything on your shirt and nobody would even notice what the fuck it said, like, most of the time. It's very rare to run into anybody that mentions the shirt you're wearing or that, that even noticed or even read what was on it or anything, you know? Because, like, it's a whole different level of consciousness. Like, people today are just zoned out and they're not fucking all there and I don't know. They're just walking around like, like drones or something, you know? No consciousness is there, you know, really. That's what it seems like. Ugh. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know, I'm just fucking frustrated with a lot of shit. 
frustrated with a lot of things. I wish that, God, I don't know, it's just, I end up listening to, like, people talking on, you know, YouTube that are, like, nihilists and anti-natalists and stuff, because, they're right, that's why, <laughs> you know, the way the world is today, it's, like, so screwed up that it's almost beyond repair it's like it's like it would def it would take like you know god coming down from the sky and like completely altering everything in the world you know making all the demons just disappear and all the weird crazy shit in the world just disappears like you know it would take something like that to fix this shit because there's not enough fucking human consciousness alive on this earth man i mean Consciousness is so fucking rare now that it's like. I mean, I could be walking through a, a, a big store, right? Or a parking lot with like hundreds and hundreds of people walking around or something, right? And you can tell pretty quickly who the conscious people are because they they behave differently they talk differently they they have uh, they're more observant you know they're more observant more uh, empathetic and caring and other people just seem to be almost robotic and cold and empty and and many times overly aggressive, uh, you know. It's freaking frustrating. It's, it is literally, it's like there's, you know, been an invasion of the body snatchers or like, like demonic manifestations and people everywhere or something almost you know it's something really weird is going on here man and it's frustrating and aggravating like when something that strange is going on around you but I something that strange going on around me but I have to I have to waste so much of my time and my energy to just go out and, 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 you know, deliver food to people or whatever, right? <laughs> go out and drive all over the place making deliveries just to try to make money to pay bills. It takes up so much of my time and my energy and my mental focus and everything. It's like, you know, it's like you have, this is the world we live in. I mean, that's why I wonder what, if this, this isn't the type of thing that kills human consciousness, you know, just having to do this fucking stupid repetitive shit. Maybe that's why people are becoming soulless fucking robots, you know, because they have to. Because if you don't become a soulless robot, you just go fucking insane. You'd become extremely depressed and fucking go crazy having to do all this bullshit that we shouldn't have to do. Having to focus so much of our time and energy into fucking, you know, meaningless, trivial fucking bullshit. Getting bombarded with fucking, you know, crazy crap at every turn, you know? Fucking World War Three and Biblical Apocalypse and demonic manifestations and fucking UFOs and aliens are real apparently, but nobody cares because the world's so goddamn crazy that it's like barely even a blip on the screen, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh, the government came out and 
The UFOs and aliens are real. Yeah, fuck it, who cares? Right? <laughs> it's like, that's how fucked up the world is. The world is so fucked up that the government's like, yeah, you UFOs and aliens are real. And people are like, eh. Who cares? <laughs> Well, because they, you know, they can't be thinking about that shit. They got to get up, you know, early in the morning to go fucking bust tables or wash dishes or pump gas or fucking push shopping carts around from the fucking grocery store parking lot or sit behind a fucking till and, and, and operate a cash register or whatever the fuck it is they do, you know? That's got to be your whole focus and your whole fucking, you know. Oh, our country's being taken over. It's being invaded. What's that you say? The rent is going through there. Oh, they're fucking, oh, uh, people are being genocided. Well, fuck that. Who cares? I can't think about that. I got to get to sleep. I got to get up early in the morning and go to the office and fucking sort a bunch of fucking useless documents all day. Right? <laughs> Keep us nice and distracted. Fucking trivial bullshit, you know? Mm. We should heat up some of these eggs that I made. I was thinking about making an omelet, but I don't... I don't know. That kind of didn't go as well as I'd hoped. It's been a while since I made an omelet, so... I just ended up making some fancy scrambled eggs instead. It's like this omelet thing is not working out. <laughs> Shit. All good. Scrambled eggs with some bacon, chopped up bits of onion and tomato, and some spices. So that's what I had. Oh, and cheese, of course. Gotta have the cheese. Hmm. usually go for like fried eggs but I started thinking about trying to do an omelet and it just wasn't turn it wasn't turning out so great so I had that just like uh, I guess I'll just do scrambled you know I chopped up my monstrous looking omelet and <laughs> turned it into scrambled eggs <laughs> It's been a long time since I made an omelet, so I... kind of lost a step there. Mm. So, yeah. I'm just cooking up what... Whatever I have to cook up left in the freezer. I got a freaking ham in there, but that's gonna be kind of a pain in the ass. I can cook it up, but then I gotta cut it up. I don't even think I have a knife around here good enough to to cut it right with. It'll be a pain in the ass. Anyways. And then I have to bag it up in separate bags so I can put most of it in the freezer so I don't let it spoil. So I'm just one person, you know. I bought it before the holidays. Like hoping that I can 
tribute to the holidays family or something, but come to find holiday after holiday that I don't have any family. You know, so that sucks. And I wonder why I end up wanting to fucking drink. I know, it's weird now. The world is a strange place now. So much more than ever before. It's like everything's backwards, upside down, inside out. It would be easier to deal with if I had people that cared about me, that family that actually, you know, it's just, I need somebody fucking real in my life that isn't some weird fucking, you know, demon creature or something. <laughs> I mean, honestly, my own family members and stuff, you know, people I've known for years, they can act kind of like they were the same person they used to be from time to time, but then every now and then something else is revealed within them, something very dark and cold and callous. something totally uncharacteristic of the people that they used to be. That was literally like seeing a scene from Invasion of the Body Snatchers. There's a scene found on YouTube from like the, the remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers where the guy's like, Carl, Carl, get the kids. We got to go. We got to go now. I was like, go where? And it's like, you can see that she's like one of the aliens or whatever. <laughs> like, that's what it's like living now here. It's literally like I'm an invasion of the body snatchers or something. But with like a... Uh, it's like a butterfly effect slash invasion of the body snatchers slash, you know, uh, Matrix or Dark City or, you know, it's just like 1984, you know, it's like they mixed up all the freaking dystopian science fiction weird shit and like blended it together. Truman Show, you know. <laughs> I don't know, I could go on for many, many hours or hell, days, weeks, months, years ranting about the weird stuff that I see around, that I experience, you know. Well, like, okay. The type of experiences I've had Like, if I drove all the way across the country to the other side of the country and walked into a gas station to get a soda... And the person behind the counter called me by name 
or like said, oh, how are you doing today? And then said my name like he already knew my name somehow. This would not be surprising. It would just be like, oh, that again, you know? <laughs> Oh, how are you doing today, John? Oh, oh. And you're thinking, how the fuck does this guy know my name, you know? How does anyone know Truman's name in the Truman Show? Huh? Right? It's weird, I'm like terrible with names when I walk into like places and I'll, like I've literally, you know, gone, drove like 60 miles away somewhere, go visit the coast or something, right? Stop off at a convenience store to get a soda or Slurpee or something. And the person there like knows my name. Like what the or go to a motel to check in or something. It's like, oh, good night. You know, cops that knows my name, right? Just people, yeah. Just random people or total strangers. Never met them before. They know they know my name somehow. And people will talk about, like, personal, like, what the hell? Now, there's all kinds of weird stuff. That's just one of the, one example. Shit that doesn't add up here. No. Mm. Fuck, I almost forgot my post office wants freaking another hundred and something dollars for my P.O. box. I almost completely forgot about it. It's another fucking bill I gotta pay. Tomorrow, I guess. Too late today. And then I'll have to drive to another fucking town to go. Because that's the closest bank, that, their bank, that I have to go deposit money to pay my rent here. And I'd like to get the hell out of here. I was thinking of trying to give like a 30 day notice or something, but. I would like to, but I don't know how the f I don't know where the fuck I'm gonna go. I don't I don't know where I'm gonna go. I really don't. And I'd be surprised if I can get any of my you know deposit back from the apartment. They'll always come up with some one reason or another to try and take your deposit. You know, the fucking part of the entry to the doorway freaking cracked because the lock didn't open all the way and I unlocked it and started pushing the door in and it just fucking cracked because it's a cheap piece of shit made out of particle board held together by two screws in the center which caused it to crack. Imagine that, a tiny thin piece of particle board with two screws holding some, you know. <laughs> Going down in, this, in a straight line together. Oh my gosh, you mean it cracked? Well, gee, how could that happen? I fucking cracked it by breathing on it too hard. <sighs> and they might try to blame me for mold coming in through the walls, which has nothing to fucking do with me. They just probably scrubbed and painted over the mold that was there before and the mold came right back through you know I did some kind of jerry rig fix for the toilet paper holder thing because that was broke when I moved in they might try to say I fucking broke it or something because Right, you know, I don't know, they give you at least forms to fill out and stuff like that to basically absolve themselves of any trouble. So they basically make it, they, it's, it's a rigged game when you move into apart, apartments, you know. 
Because you're not even, there's nowhere on there for you to even, like, speak and, and document all the things that are wrong with the place in the first place when you move in. And then there's other stuff that they can just cover up, you know, problems that you wouldn't even notice until you've been there for a while. I can't believe how high the fuck... I mean, you would think that there would be, like, millions of people riding in the streets over the cost of living. But nobody seems to give a damn. I guess everybody's just too busy trying to make the money to pay the bills. They don't have time to go out and, you know, flip cars over and protest in the streets because they're too busy working to try and pay the fucking ridiculous bills. <laughs> and when they're homeless, they're in no position to go out and protest. They're kind of tr stuck trapped in some place and everybody treats them like garbage and nobody will listen to them. Because they're not even treated like a human being anymore. If they don't have a bunch of money and a steady job. Which... <clears throat> I mean, people don't even listen to, to... I mean, there's people that are, you know, respectable... What would be considered respectable members of the community and stuff that nobody would listen to. You know? You could be a... You know, a uh, banker, uh, you know, manager at some place, or, or uh, freaking, uh, you know, somebody that runs a farm and owns a home and, you know, 60 acres of land or something, and go to a city council and they don't give, they don't give a crap about what you have to say. Like, <laughs> it's just how it is, pretty much. I'm screwed up. I'm sick of it. And I'm sorry if I don't have, make this picture freaking go through the whole thing. It's a pain in the ass. They need to fix that using cap cut and, uh, in order to have like even a photo in the background, you have to like hold your finger on something and drag it the whole way like slow. It could take like five, ten minutes or something of just holding my finger on this shit and staring at the phone watching it drag across the goddamn audio to keep the picture on there. And it's a fucking time consuming pain in the ass. There should just be an option to click on it and be like, you know, leave picture till end, you know. But no. Uh, I don't know. I should learn more about video editing and all that kind of stuff. I wish I could get into a position where I had, like, real stable housing. And I could just focus all my attention on making videos. And making, like, quality videos. Maybe start a podcast or something, you know? I could put my face out there or something, but it's just currently I'm in a situation where, like, I mean, I don't know, it's probably, it's probably st maybe stupid. I guess you got to show your face for people to want to fucking listen to anything, you know, but But we live in a world where, like, I mean, the fact of the matter is, if you don't, like, own a home and a couple acres and have a bunch of money in the bank and a bunch of fucking 
family and friends around that support and care about you and so on and so forth, and the rest of the world has no respect for you whatsoever. You know? And more people just out to fucking stomp on you and fucking shut you up and get rid of you than anyone there to be supportive of you. You know? <laughs> so putting your face out there is maybe kind of stupid, you know? And there's all kinds of ways, you know, people put their face out there that can be used to, like, screw with you, you know? Uh, I'm putting my real name and my face out there because I'm, you know. Well, I mean, it's kind of stupid. <laughs> I get it, I mean, but it's kind of not the smartest thing in the world to do that. Especially if you're not in a position to... I mean, it's easier if you're, you know... You own a home and, and you have all the... Whatever, the, the pump and the, the... God, I don't know. What's the, what's the right word I'm looking for? like you have to have some you know pre some status for people to have any real res any respect for you whatsoever I mean, you could be just as good of a person you know but if you don't have some sort of title or degree or some kind of uh, something that's looked up to like I don't know, like if I was a, you know, veteran of the Iraq war or something, and put my face out there and speak, you know, everybody would have a, oh, you know, people be wanting to listen and respect you and stuff like that, or if I had some, uh, just whatever, you know, shit like that, people, certain things people respect, whether they should or not, they, people in whatever position get more respect because of their status and, and position or whatever the fuck, right? It just is what it is. Note how great that is by observing that we're ruled over by billionaire pedophile Satanists. <laughs> They've got really, you know, big fancy types of status and you know, I mean, they're very respectable folks. You can definitely respect anyone who goes and works for the, you know. On the other hand, like with other people, you can certainly have to have a lot of respect for anyone that goes and signs up to murder people in foreign lands for the government. For fucking low wages and shit. That seems like a good idea. Clearly, that takes a highly developed intellect and sense of moral responsibility. I don't know, man. <clears throat> There's definitely like a rank and file system in our fucking society where it's like people buy the, you know, whatever thing they've done or just by having a bunch of money and possessions or whatever, they have a, a higher status. It's like people are, you know, ranked by society, you know. You know, if you're, like, if you're some homeless person living on the street, you know, getting drunk and you're stoned or whatever the fuck, like, you're not even a person. You don't even exist. You're not a person, you know. But if you have a nice house and a nice car and so on and oh and you can state some sort of a fancy sounding job title for the slave labor you do to make money then that makes you more respectable and more of a person mm -hmm. uh. 
got her. Some people are able to gain more level of respect just by being good at uh, bullshit. Just being a real good bullshit artist, you know. I see that quite a bit. Yeah, if you just have a lot of confidence, you speak with a lot of confidence and authority, and and just you know, I'm an expert. I know things, or you know, I'm. Sent by God to tell you to do this. You know, people will listen to that kind of shit, right? <laughs> yeah, there's cheat, cheat codes to gaining status, I suppose. I mean, I suppose if I wanted to gain status or something and have people listen to me, I could go on and say a bunch of nice, shiny things. You know, I could be like, you just have to trust in the plan that the universe has for you. The universe, you know, will manifest what it is that you want and love, light, peace. Light workers are coming from the constellation of Andromeda to rescue us. We have already won. Great changes are coming in the world. Uh, I don't know, man. If you just say, like, things that people want to hear, you know, that's one way you can get people to be interested in listening to you, by telling them what they want to hear, or by telling them that they're sinful and wicked if they don't agree with you, you know, using the, I am a representative of the Lord Almighty angle or whatever, right? Or you could go on there and say that you, I am the angel Michael. I have come to bring you a message. You know, sort of like that. People do that crap, you know. Quick shortcut to special status. Mm. Uh, there's people that are like, say they're the queen of America or something and make videos about, and people listen to them. You know, there's all kinds of weird shit like that. <laughs> I mean, you're really not judged for the content of your character, your knowledge, etc. Wisdom, what, whatever. You're, you're judged by kind of like herd mentality. What do people, what, what, you know. What does this person's status, you know, in the groupthink mentality? According to groupthink mentality, according to the herd, what what is their what is their status in the herd? Are they special status in the herd? Shut up. You're not, you know. <laughs> I don't know, that's kind of fucking weird. Oh well. Ranting and ranting. I'm gonna shut the hell up now. Alright then.